All right, are you amped up? I'm all charged up. Can you feel the electricity? <laughs> okay, that's enough, you're done. All right. all right, this week we made a giant charger. Yep, and it's giant. You already said giant. Yes, I did. But before we get to that, it's time for a make or break. Hey guys, welcome back to Make or Break, where we share our favorite videos of the week, and then we challenge ourselves to build a project of our own. I'm Rob. And I'm Sarah, and this week we have a trebuchet. Yup, and some wooden pets. And a super smart desk. Let's get to it. All right, so it's hard to start any conversation right now without mentioning the current pandemic that's gripping the world. The vast majority of us are either forced or volunteering to exercise some self-distancing, and that's leaving a ton of families with little to do at home. Fortunately, there are a ton of makers posting project videos specifically for families. The first one, the Wood Whisperer, Mark Spagnolo. Spagnolo! Yes, that's him. This time, Mark decided to build a simple project with his son, Matteo. They built a trebuchet. Using the simplest of tools and materials, they built a cool toy that they could both enjoy. Honest Work Designs had a similar idea. Haley gathers some scrap wood and walks us through making three-dimensional portraits of her pets. I have a perfect pooch named Maui who's gonna get one of these. If you're looking for a bigger challenge and distraction, Steve Ramsey of Mere Mortal Woodworking is currently posting daily episodes of a lockdown woodworking series, which so far is focused on a new printer stand. Steve has an awesome community of fans that will gladly keep you company as you build at home. All right, as long as we're sharing more challenging projects, Blacktail Studio posted a new desk build video that he made for his wife with one of the most beautiful tops I've ever seen, period. He also incorporates several smart features you won't want to miss. It's so gratifying when you can see the light at the end of a tunnel on a huge project, and Ryan from El Post Rustics is almost there with this huge dining room piece. Do you like doing puzzles? No. <laughs> what about woodworking puzzles? No. Okay, well, Stephanie posted an oh-so-satisfying video of her laying the final pieces of a tabletop that she's been working on for a while, and it is beautiful. The Wooden Maven posted a video where she was learning to turn a cherry wood bowl. This was the first bowl she's ever turned, and she is addicted. Trust me, it's really addicting. Wait, you've turned before? Oh, yeah. What have you turned? This. Why do you have that? Because you have to drink out of something. Okay, all right. Well, summer is just around the corner for us, and that can only mean one thing. Well, it actually means a lot of things, but it also means that it's almost time for backyard games for kids. Build Something shared this water sand table hybrid for kids that is so cool, I may just need to make one. Okay, so it's time for our project of the week. I was super excited about this one. So for inspiration, we used a video posted by Evan and Caitlin, I think last year, I think, mm -hmm. where they made a mega giant charger for our, all of their batteries for the tools. So we have a lot of tools and a lot of batteries. So many tools. Which meant we had to make a really big charger. Well, Sarah was unfortunately sick the first day of our build, so I had to go it alone. Well, not totally alone. My daughter helped me get the lumber we needed. To make it easier to get home, we had the guy with the orange apron cut our sheet into four pieces before we left. Kaylee loved the panel saw. After I got back, it was time to start making charger choices. Since our inspiration this week was Evan and Caitlin's video, I did my best to follow along. Our other weekly show, The Power Tool Week in Review, gives us the opportunity to test a lot of power tools, so over time, we've collected a lot of chargers and batteries. But for this build, we decided to stick to the nine that we use the most. The spot I had picked on the wall was tall and narrow, so I decided to design a triple-decker layout. I got all my pieces cut out and ready to go, and then decided to wait one sleep later to put it together with Sarah. Once I was back on my feet, we got to assembly. We started by sanding all of the pieces and then started drilling pocket holes. I realized once again that instead of designing the project ahead of time, I just decided to wing it, which made us constantly run into issues. But we got them figured out and started assembly with the front pieces, leaving us with access to the back where we could sort out all of the wires. But first we had to attach the charger, which is where we ran into our first problem. Two of the chargers, the Bosch and the Makita, didn't have mounting tabs on the back. What gives Bakita? Wait, are, are we calling Bosch and Makita Bakita now? Yep. So we couldn't just mount them to the panel with the screws, so Rob came up with this clever idea. I simply removed the back panels of each charger, drilled some holes in the case, and then the wood plate, and used commercial zip ties to hold it all together. And it worked great. With the chargers in place, we stood it up and spun it around so we could start getting the cables under control and all plugged into a pair of power strips. We used the heart multi-tool to cut tiny corners out of the shelves to allow us to run cables to the middle section where we put the two strips. 
After that, we just had to drill a hole in the back panel and... So the day we shot this, Connor, our cameraman, it was his turn to be homesick. So we had to manage the camera ourselves. And we didn't notice that the battery died. Sorry, Connor. So that means we don't have footage of us putting the back on or attaching the French cleat. The freedom cleat. Uh, sorry, the freedom cleat. Anyways, we got it up and stocked with batteries. We were so excited. I love making products I know we're gonna use every day. Yeah, to be honest here, that turned out way nicer than I thought. Yep, it did, but ours doesn't light up like Evan and Caitlin's does. Yeah, but ours is bigger. Okay, that's true. All right, what's next? All right, I think choosing easy projects that families can do together at home is a really good idea. All right. So I found a video from Do It Yourself, It's Easy, with instructions for making a penny hockey game. All right, that sounds fun to me. Before we go, several of you shared your own project with us using the hashtag make or break. Yep, we saw a flower bed, a few chargers, a bathroom remodel, and our winner this week is a really pretty shoe rack from Lynn's Club. Congratulations. Yep. And we're gonna give away a whole bunch of heart hand tools this week. To enter, you just gotta share a project with us on Instagram or Facebook using the hashtag Make or Break. All right, break's over. Let's go make something.